Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Isaiah chapter 19 verses 6 through 7. Let's go ahead and pray and we can begin. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for keeping us. You're a keeping kind of God. We love you. We praise you. We thank you that your chastening is your way of keeping us and making us to abide in you, helping us to stay there. We love you. We love you. We love you. All glory, all praise, all honor be unto you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're coming on a cloud, Lord God, and we give you praise and glory because we're watching for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys. Lord, bless this scripture and help it to be planted well in us. All right. So we are in Isaiah chapter 19, verse 6 and 7. All right, and it's verse six, and its canals will become foul. The branches of Egypt's Nile will diminish and dry up. Reeds and rushes will rot away. All right, so um, this is another reflection or image of Babylon, right? So last time we had a, a reflection of Babylon through Moab. Remember, Moab um, just represents Babylon in the sense of Moab led the children of Israel astray. The women um, were are, were enticing to the children of Israel. So in their their life and their lifestyle, and and they were always in conflict with Moab, but they were also led astray by Moab. So here, this is. Egypt. Egypt is very similar in that sense. Remember, Egypt had multiple gods and Egypt um, was just very um, representative of oppression towards the children of Israel and, and just their lifestyle and the way that they lived was attractive to the people who were serving them, right? The Israelites. So um, when they left uh, Egypt, they were very focused on getting back to it. Egyptian lifestyle, getting back to living in that way, even though they they were highly oppressed while they were there, right? Sometimes slavery can look more attractive than the thought of, of being dependent on oneself or one's God to um, restore them, right? For some people who have a mindset of, of serving, they think that um, they need to see the master that they serve, right? And that's not faith. To serve the master who you cannot see is to operate in a spirit of faith and to walk by with the, without sight, right? To not have to see the person who's going to feed you is, is a faith move. So the children of Israel, you know, were very easy to fall back into their ways of wanting to see their master handing them food to their mouth, right? To see the fish and the onions and the way that they used to eat and the good foods and everything. Um, before uh, before they, they got out there in the wilderness and were following Moses, right? They didn't have any rules. They didn't have the law presented to them yet where they couldn't eat certain foods and they couldn't do certain things and they couldn't touch certain things, right? They could see every God that they had. They could, they could eat every food that they wanted. And so they wanted to go back to an Egyptian way, right? And so this is the same type of mentality that many um, Christians who are representative of what the children of Israel would have been, um, who, Christians who want to go back to their old ways, right? It, this is a very enticing world that we live in. It is a very drawing world. It Netflix and television and computers and buying and selling and coveting and, and you know, more money and all, all that is very drawing. Even getting Getting into your car, seeing the newest car that's out and you want that car and oh my goodness, that one looks better than the brand new one that you just got, right? It's a life of drawing and a mentality of covetousness and for the children of Israel, that was what they were dealing with and, and God pronounced a curse on the Egypt 
um, Egypt to, um, you know, to, to stop that, to, to have a final finish, uh, Oh, uh, um, I want to say like a pouring out of the wrath, right? And in that same way, that same thing is going to happen to Babylon, right? To set the people back straight. In the end, um, uh, when when Christ is is come and and Babylon is 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 going to receive their reward, right? They have led the entire world astray, right? The the world is led astray by the mentality of Babylon and so it says and its canals will become foul and the branches of Egypt Nile will diminish and dry up reeds and rushes will rot away so um, here it's saying that um, the canals will become foul. We know that, you know, the water will be poisoned, right? In Babylon, in the end times, it's it's going to be the the wildlife in the water will be destroyed. Um, I want to say, I, I didn't look this up, but if you go back and listen to the teaching, it's so much of the water um, will become like blood, just like in the River Nile, right? It, it will become like blood and a part of the sea will be destroyed like the the wildlife and the creatures and it will no longer be any good for fishing right so that's food that's being taken away taken out of the equation it says and its canals will become foul so canals imply inland right it's it's actually not the sea it's actually inland and it will be like rivers the rivers will will become polluted right and so and not only those rivers and we get lots of our food from um um, the sea, but also there's food sources in the rivers as well. I know one of the outlets um, for the Chattahoochee River is is oysters, right? And that was what the big lawsuit was about. But anyway, um, but the the key point is that anything that came from that, any shipping that came from that, any water that you might drink from that area, it's that's a water source for all of where I live. That's those rivers are water sources, right? And that's what the whole court trial was about was water sources. You know, you can't just grab this water source, grab that water source. But God says in the end, all of that is going to be polluted, right? Where are you going to get your water from the rainwater well if you get it from the rainwater you better hope it's not acid rain we talked about a lot of this in the study of the book of revelation right if you have a huge bomb go off or something like that your rainwater is even going to be contaminated that's why they know that we know that the river will be contaminated because the river's source of water is the rain and these estuaries um that are north right so all of that is going to be contaminated in the end time and in Babylon, it's basically letting us know that, hey, God is coming. He is going to he's going to do this thing. And, and you know that we won't be here for most of it, a lot of it, because, you know, where will we what will we God is going to watch out for his own. Right. He's going to make sure that we have something to eat. He's going to make sure that we have something to drink. So whatever, however, this is going to come, you know, God is going to watch over his own. It's what I'll say. So. It says, and the canals will become foul. So the canals are the parts where the um, boats and stuff travel, the inner inland parts. The branches of Egypt's Nile will diminish and dry up. So that's talking about the parts that creep off of the canals, right? The parts where you would be delivering goods, possibly. Um, those are going to diminish and dry up. So not only are they going to be polluted, they're going to start becoming dry right they're not even it'd be one thing if you could go and grab the water and boil it right but there there's going to be a dryness there's going to be a drought so all of those those outer branching parts are going to be gone right so there's going to be a severe I'm not going to say famine, but basically this is implying that there will be a lack of water for the people, right? There will be a lack of sustenance for the people. Some people will, you know, 
thirst to death. I don't know what it would be. It would be starve, I guess. But just it, there wouldn't be anything to drink for some people. And here it says reeds and rushes will rot away, right? Basically, there's nothing that you, if you don't have um, water coming into an area, you have these pockets of sitting water, right? So that water becomes stale and foul, remember? And where it said foul, it, it those those pockets where there were fish or wildlife or sea, it just becomes mud and sludge, right? And and that sits for a little while. And it says the reeds and rushes will rot away. They're going to become rotten, right? Because they're going to sit out in the sun and then they're going to become mush. And then there's going to be nothing there. It's just going to be hot, foul, yucky land and no water, right? So God is giving us a glimpse of what is to come very soon upon the world wherever Babylon is. And I never said where Babylon was. So I'll just say that, you know, Babylon is about to fall. So verse seven, there will be bare places by the Nile on the brink of the Nile. And, and for the, let me read all of it. And all that is sown by the Nile will be parched will be driven away and will be no more. Wow. Okay, so it says there will be bare places by the Nile on the brink of the Nile. So the brink meaning the the banks of the Nile, right? The the edges of of where the Nile would be. And for the the people that live during this time to hear something like this, it it almost sounds impossible, right? Because this was such a lush and abundant area. They remember the Nile and everything that's fed from the Nile as being a highly, you know, lavish, lush, green, beautiful waters overflowing, right? It says there will be bare places by the Nile and on the brink of the Nile and all that is sown by the Nile will be parched. So everything that was, the Nile was feeding is going to become a, a dry place. It's going to die off, right? Because there's going to be no more source of water. It says it will be driven away and will be no more. So everything that was flourishing in, in, in this Babylon-like society, everything that was being fed, by this Babylon-like society, it's going to dry up. So, you know, um, I, I feel okay to say this. I know that um, whenever um, things happen with the economy of America, um, they say America catches a cold and the rest of the world sneezes because it's such a leader in its economic influence, right? Uh, it, there's such a big trickle down effect on the rest of the world, especially as it relates to third world nations. And then also just the trade in other countries is affected by the trade of America, right? Because there's such we're such consumers here. There's such high level of consumption and not necessarily production. So um, we are vacuums right here. So it's saying that here, um, it says there will be bare places by the Nile on the brink of the Nile. So that means the outer edges of wherever this Babylon society are, are going to be affected right? Every source that was touching this area or touching its border will be affected. They will get the cold, right? They won't, they, they won't necessarily get the cold, but they'll be sneezing. I'll say that. And it says, um, there will be bare places by the Nile on the brink of the Nile and all is and all that is sown by the Nile will be part. So all of the production that they do have is going to be dead, right? Every seed that they've sown, every seed that Babylon or field that Babylon has sown is going to be dried up. It's going to be wasted. All the seeds will be wasted because the water will be gone and the water that is there will be foul, right? There won't be any clean water. There won't be any source of continuous flourishing for them, it says there will be bare places by the now on the brink of the now and all that is sown by the now will be parched, will be driven away and will be no more. So all of the, the connections that were intertwined with this modern day Babylon 
um, will will be affected, right? There won't be anything that will be left untouched that 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 was once connected to it, right? We know that in the book of Revelation, there is great mourning, right? When when Babylon falls, so um, I feel like this is a great um, image that the Lord is sending us um, to let us know of the times that we live in and the type of destruction that is coming upon the land of Babylon. And it is important for us to research and study the word of God and seek God's space for the revelation of whether or not we live in a Babylon society. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your warnings. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your touch in our minds and in our hearts. God bless us. Watch over us. Help us to escape the trial that is coming upon the earth, Lord God. Help us to keep our minds stayed on you and faint not, God. Help us to not become weary in well-doing, God. Help us to reap this harvest, Jesus, and faint not. Lord God, bless us as we continue on. Help the inside of our cups to be clean, not just the outside. God, help us not to just serve you with our lips, but help us to serve you with our heart and our service. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.